10th anniversary of the James Jacket Children's Book Award. This award aims to encourage reading outside of school and to increase the number of young people using local libraries. From all of the children's books published each year, five are shortlisted by a chosen panel. Six to eight pupils from each school read the books and come to this event to discuss them and vote for their favourite book. Here in the Reading Corner, we have been reviewing the books and interviewing some of the writers. Today in this special episode of the Reading Corner, we will join the nominees, Hull Libraries and the children here at the Big Malarkey Festival. Welcome to East Park for the James Record Children's Book Awards 2017. We are here in the main tent at the festival where we are going to be joined by the shortlisted authors. They will take in turns to talk to us about their books. Then the pupils will have a chance to discuss each book. And finally, they will vote and then this afternoon the winner will be announced. It's about a boy called Daniel and he feels a little bit on the outside of society and he doesn't really think he fits in. He's got two mad friends, Gordon the Geek and Freddo, who has some very unpleasant personal habits. But they're all great mates and they always seem to get into mischief together. Our first nominee is Joe Franklin's Help I'm an Alien. So tell me what tell me what it's about. Well this book is about a boy called Daniel who thinks he's different to everyone to everyone else, including his family. His sister tells him that he's an alien. Him and his friends believe her and they try to send him back up into space to reunite, reunite him with his family. This was a very popular book with our, with our reviewers, so let's take a look what they thought. I don't think that I've ever read a book like it because it's very different. So I really enjoyed it. So I would like to rate it four out of five because um, I like predictable books because you know what's going to happen if, if, if you like it uh, then you're going to read it if you don't like it then you're not going to read it yeah. but in this case I had to read it anyway but it still was very enjoyable I did once though hear about a house that was stolen don't roll your eyes at me it's a strange tale but it's true in fact when it happened it almost started a war a war like no other you see, this house was special. So special that this wasn't even the first time it had been stolen. And I don't mean burgled. Anyone can be unlucky enough to have their belongings nicked by a stinking rotter with a swag bag and a mask. What I mean is that this house had been properly stolen twice. The bricks, the door, the roof, everything. Don't look at me like I'm a loon and don't throw this book on the fire either. I know it sounds weird, but I promise you it happened. This is the story of how the house that was stolen was stolen. So settle back, open your mind really wide, and let the battle begin. Thanks ever so much for having me back. It's a real joy. Up next is The War Next Door by Phil L. What is it about? Well, The War Next Door is a comic novel about a young girl who moves into the neighbourhood and the local bully gets very jealous of her and they get into this argument. This is when The War Next Door begins. Our reviewers didn't find this book funny. Let's see, let's hear what they had to say about it. What would we rate the book out of five? Um, well, I, I, I suppose I would rate it two out of five. Same. I suppose that I would rate it one because, as I just said, I thought I found um, that the illustrations were the best parts, even though that the illustrations didn't match the writing. Like one illustration would be on one page, but then the picture. Say um, if this masher person knocked out a tooth, it'd be on one page. And about two pages later, it'd say about the writing. It. Yeah. <coughs> but when what, like, what oh, about what yeah? What about you, Artie? I well, I'd rate it two mm -hmm. because. It's not my type of book, and if it's not my type of book, I would definitely rate it three stars down. But I still liked it, so instead of one, I'll give it two. And what about you, Alan? I would say like two out of five because it's good, but then it's bad on the other hand. And I would give it two out of five. What's going on? <laughs> I would mm. give it two out of five because. No, I just really yeah. didn't like it. And I was really into football as a kid, that was sort of. Um, that was like my real passion sort of as I got older. So it made sense to me to write something about football. 
So I started to do some research, you know, I had a look at what books were out there, what other authors were writing about football. And what I found was that a lot of these books are sort of set in football academies. And again, I've talked a lot about football academies this week, you know, it's where the young players who were the best sort of enter these football academies. But I wanted to write something for the kids who, you know, weren't necessarily, you know, ever going to be a professional footballer, which was like me, you know, which was like most kids, because when I was a kid, you know, I was terrible at football, I was, I was rubbish. Um, but he didn't stop me playing, you know, I loved football and I'd, I'd be playing it all the time. When I wasn't playing it, you know, I was watching it on the telly, or I was reading about it, or I was playing, you know, football video games like old school FIFA, like I'm sure maybe some of your dads probably play it, you know, on the, on the old school consoles you got up in your attic or whatever. Um, so, you know, so when I was thinking about um, what I wanted to write, I wondered, you know, where are these stories for these kids like me who loved football but were never going to be sort of professional football players? The next nominee is John Hickman with Freaks United. What, what's this book about? This is a gruesome novel about a bunch of freaks that, that get rejected from the football team and then move to another school and, yeah, again, get rejected. They then join join forces and make a football team and go against all the other football teams. This was another popular book and this is what our, our review was for. So now we are going to move on to five star rating. I would probably rate it four out of five. Because I would, well I would rate it four out of five because like, I just like, I suppose it was good, it was very good, but Something just like made me feel like, oh no, I don't like that bit. Yeah. I can't remember what it was, but it just made me feel like, no, I don't like that bit. Yeah. So, four out of five. Yeah. Um, I would rate it probably four out of five again because I really enjoyed the book, but a couple of parts in the book I thought was like not needed. Mm -hmm. So would, that's why I'm giving it a four out of five. I would give it five out of five. <gasps> wow. Because wow. it's a really good book and it's like one of my my favourites out of all of them and it's interesting mm -hmm. and it's really funny how they got all their characters to get together. To get to, yeah. Yeah. And what about you, Mama? Oh, uh, like? I would rate it four out of five because it didn't have any pictures because I want to like see how the, yeah. how it like, beefy Angela and Seth looked like. Yeah. Yeah, I'd quite I, like to I would think, well. I would think beefy is like a yeah, big fat know. person. Well, beefy. Maybe not. No, no maybe it, not. They said that he is. Yeah, and he, yeah, maybe um, maybe like strong, like you know, um, <laughs> like cause beefy but we don't know because there aren't any pictures. Beefy beefy but there was like lots of description, there. description. Yeah, yeah. so you can kind of imagine like. description. Everything's been born. The bones thin with fresh fruits born in spring. Which turn into tapo brothers that like to eat each other in spring. Next we have David Parkin with his book, The Nose That Nobody Picked. Is it as disgusting as it sounds? It is very rotten. It is about a boy called Christopher who is a keen gardener and he finds this horrible nose in his garden. Then he meets a scientist who is looking for the nose and that's how it goes. Maybe this book was too revolting for our reviewers because they didn't really like it. Here's what they had to say about it. Did we have like a... Up. Like a favourite uh, character? Yeah. Nurse. The nurse, yeah, it was definitely the nurse. Yeah. I found the scientist quite interesting. Did you? Yeah, yeah, I did. I didn't really. By the end, the scientist is all good and he's like, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That is actually. That I thought that, that kind of spoiled the book a bit because mm -hmm. I think it would have been better if it was like, I'll be, I'll be back. You know? Yeah. Like, Not like, like leaving you a cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed my visit a couple of weeks ago and I love going around the schools. I really like getting the sword out and seeing the look on Tracy's face. That was really funny. Um, 
that was what I wanted to do today. I wanted to bring my sword back to Hull. Uh, it's a lovely sword, it's magnificent. Sword. It's about that long. It's a sort of Anglo-Saxon replica sword made for me by my dad, or actually made for my son, my teenage son, by my dad, who's a metal worker. And he made this gorgeous steel sword. The edge is quite sharp. It's not razor sharp, it's quite sharp. But the, what I love doing, I don't know if, if the schools that I visited, what we did was we held it up above our heads and we declared a, a Saxon king or queen uh, and that's how we selected it. You didn't have to be the strongest, you didn't have to be the biggest, but you had to have the meanest face and you had to have the loudest shout. And I wanted to do that today because I thought it'd be fun. Um, and when I told my publisher, I'm going up to Hull, I'm going to speak to loads of children, oh, I'm taking my sword, she said, no, you're not. The final nominee is N.S. Blackman with Freedom for Bron. So who is Bron? Bron is an orphan who many people say he's got potential. He then finds this necklace that makes him inspired. And later on he becomes a town hero. This is a book that none of our reviewers really liked. Let's find out why. So, Alton, you go first. Five star rating. Zero. Why? Because it, it wasn't... More, it's not an interesting book to read. Because uh, no. I definitely I def agree with that. I Martin. would just give it I would give it a negative 100. It's just so <gasps> bad. <gasps> Finally, decision time has arrived and the votes are coming in. It won't be long till we know who has won this year's James Reckitt Children's Book Awards. Now everyone will be taking a break for lunch, so please join us in part two. Where we will be talking to other people to find out their opinion on who's going to win. Daisy will be showing us around the rest of the big Malaki Festival. And we will finally discover the winner of the James Record Children's Book Award. Welcome back to the James Reckitt Children's Book Awards. We are about to find out who this year's winner is. But well, Ellie, we spoke to some of the pupils to find out what they think about this year's books. Who do you think will win? War Next Door. Why? Because it was really funny and it was imaginable. Who are you voting for? The War Next Door. Why? Because I think we need a person from Hull to win. Which is your favourite? Um, Freaks United. Why? Because it has fun use of language and it's really exciting and adventurous. Would you, have you considered changing your mind about the book you were cho chosen at the beginning? No. So which book did you vote for? The one next door. Why? Because it is funny and yeah, I like it, yeah. Yeah. Who do you think will win? Joe Franklin. Why is that? Because she wrote a really good book. Right. Which one is your favourite? Um, Joe Franklin's book, which is Alien, um, Help, I'm an Alien. Why is that? Because it was really interesting and it was something different. Who do you think will win? <laughs> um, well, I don't really know, but I hope that... that the one next door will win. Why do you think the one next door will win? Well, because it's a really great book and uh, some parts are really funny. Which is your favourite book? The one next door. And why? Because it's a real good book and is is a type of my book that I would like for. And children will children will like to to like read the book and, and it's a good idea to read for the one next door. Who do you think will win? Um, hopefully the one next star will. Um, even the, I think I think that um, the news that nobody picked is going to win because um, the majority on our table voted for that. Why? Why is that? Um, well, I think they find it funny. I mean, I voted for the one next star because it was, um, it was it had it had more of a moral. What is your favourite book? Help, help, I'm an alien. And why? Because it's funny. Who do you think will win? I think that the one next door book will win. And why? Because it's very, I think that it's very popular. popular. Have you changed your mind during, during today? No. So what, which book are you voting for? 
Uh, the one next door. Thank you. There is more going on in East Park than the Children's Book Awards. The Big Malarkey Festival is Hull's first ever children's literature festival. Daisy went out into the park to find out all about it. I'm at the Big Malarkey Festival and I'm really excited. It's a great place for book lovers. Let's go. decorating things in Hull. If it's not moths, it's toads. If it's not toads, it's hard hats. Can I make a hard hat? Oh, absolutely you can. can. Colour one side, colour the other side, stick colour that side and that goes at the top like that. The sides go together and then you peek. Once you've completed, bad. This wouldn't be a book festival without a bookshop. This is a library festival, but libraries aren't just about books, they're about getting involved with technology. going on and you just need to relax and the bigger the chair the more relaxing it is. I'm not sure what this is but it looks fascinating. Let's go find out. And this is my travelling treasury and inside are the greatest stories the world has ever seen and I should know because I have travelled the globe in search of the most fantastic tales so that I might put them in here. I ask as you go inside, it is very important that you take a leaf out of my book. Wow, that was an amazing story. I like how they acted it out on the inside of the caravan was amazing. But they're not the only storytellers. There's some behind me which are only for little kids. The Big Malarkey is also a place for children to meet their favourite authors. In here right now is Julian Clary talking about his book, The Bald. When I was a little boy of about seven or eight years old, I used to make up stories for myself and I used to watch people. And living next door to me in Teddington, where I grew up, was a family, and they were very, very hairy. <laughs> the mother had lots of long, gorgeous hair, and in the summertime, when the father took his shirt off, he had a very hairy back. 
and I would watch them and I made up a story for myself that this was a family of animals living next door disguised as human beings. This is the first ever Big Malarkey Festival and I've got to say it's amazing. And don't worry, because if you can't make it this year, there's always next year. Now back to the Children's Book Awards. It's the moment of truth. This is where we find out about the winner of the James Reckitt Children's Book Awards 2017. The winner is... The Wall Next Door has been declared the winner. That was a big shock for our reviewers. Thank you for joining us here at the Reading Corner, here at the Big Malaki Festival for the 2017 Children's Book Awards. How do you feel about winning? Oh, uh, shocked, amazed. Uh, yeah, I don't often win anything like this, so that's, um, and especially to win it here in Hull where I was born, that's a really brilliant thing. Thank you. Have you got any other plans for any other books? Yep, yeah, so uh, I'm writing, I've written another book which is called Scaredy Cat, Scaredy Cat, which comes out in September. And then uh, I'm writing another book as well, which I don't know what it's called yet. And, uh, and I've only written about a thousand words, so I've got about another 60,000 still to write. Thank you. Pleasure, you're very welcome.